a tendency to put a stereotype on people who are not connected with God. Uh, well, well, that's the reason the church is supposed to be the church because our job is to try to connect people who don't know Jesus Christ as the, in the pardon of their sins. And, and what is the best way to connect people who don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of sin is to allow our life to speak volumes of who God is. When somebody come in, they should see Christ not only on the outside of me, but they should see Christ on the inside of me. They, they should see my walk is lined up with the will of God and the way I speak is lined up with the will of God. That's how we draw others to Christ. He says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Let, let, me, let me put the disclosure there because the enemy also knows how to come and destruct worship. Uh, but, it, but if those that have come that are looking for deliverance, we have a responsibility to be patient with you. Because if the truth be told, God is not close to being through with some of us yet. I, 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 I know you walk in and act like you got it all together. And, and I know you feel like you already arrived. But if folks really knew your story, the truth is God is not through with you yet. You, 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 you're just part of the process of where God is trying to wean some stuff out of you in order to get you to be obedient to his word. Somebody ought to thank God that he's not through with me yet. I, I, I'm still on the wheel. I'm still being molded and being made by the hand of God. I thank God that he's not finished with me yet. God is not close with being through with us. But we must show a disconnected world that Jesus is still able to bring them out. We must show a disconnected world that just because you are disconnected, it does not mean that the Lord thinks more of us than he does of him. That is what we find here in the text. It was a lesson that Peter had to learn. Peter being a Jew, had a certain prejudice against the Gentiles. And in fact, they were considered heathens or unclean from the Jewish standpoint of theology. The Jews felt that way because they were not considered as God's chosen people like they were. But now that we are under the disposition of grace, somebody ought to thank God for grace. And from God's position, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male or female in Christ. We have all been brought with the same price. And we only give God the praise because his grace is sufficient for us. Somebody ought to thank God that his grace caught us and capture us from where we are and he saved us and redeemed us and brought us with a price. That's why I told you a couple of Wednesdays ago, you ought to walk around and begin to declare that you are expensive to God. And, and the reason you are expensive to God is because God sent his only son by the name of Jesus Christ to die for somebody wretched like us. If we can be honest and transparent, we didn't deserve it. We weren't fit to live, but we weren't ready to die. But the hand of God saved us and redeemed us. Somebody ought to thank God for his grace. brought us with that same price. The text also declares to us that in order to connect a disconnected people, we need to let them know that Jesus Christ is our great equalizer. Here it is in verse 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteous is accepted with him. Verse 35 here in this text is a continuation of verse 34. I like how the New Living uh, Translation puts it. Uh, it says, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. <laughs> can, I, can I say it again? He, he says, I see plainly that God shows no favoritism. 
And in every nation, he has set those who fear him and do what is right. I thank God that there's one place I can come in the church and there ought to be no favoritism. You, you may have favorite on your job, but God loves everybody. He says, he says, in every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what's right. And Peter in the text is letting us know that those who fear the Lord and do what is right is accepted by him. You must learn that it does not matter who you are. Or where you come from. No matter if you're Democrat or Republican, black or white, Baptist or Lutheran, rich or poor. Whatever you are, it does not matter. But what does matter is that you fear the work of the Lord. Righteously, that he will accept you. And the Lord is not interested in the stuff that we think makes us righteous. He's not interested, I told us before, with our good works. Because we can spend a lifetime doing good and never do God. He is not interested in what us, makes us look righteous. That's, not, that's why a long time ago, I've been church for a long time, Deacon Hunt, and I ain't impressed with how people come in and dress. Because you look righteous on the outside, but you look nasty on the inside. I'm, I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to say that. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot where we are. I, 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 but, but we have a sense of righteousness. All that. We know how to look and we know how to perceive. Or we know how to act when we're in certain environments. But when we leave out the church, can't nobody tell whether you've been in the presence of God or not. No, I'm not impressed by what your lifestyle looks like inside of church. I'm impressed by what it looks like on the outside. What do people on your job say about you? And what do your family say about you? And what do those who you are connected with say about you? That's what I'm impressed with. It is only the Lord himself that can make us righteous. That's why we have such a separation with denominationalism now because everybody think they got it together come over here we got it together come over to this church we got it together and everybody's wrong because the reason you come is because you don't got it together and the reason you show up is because you need a word from God in order to get you together you ain't all together if you had it all together, there ain't no need for you to come to church or for you to be in the presence of God. But because we don't got it all together, I wish I'm talking to about five folks in the building that said, I ain't got it all together. I got some eyes to still dot, some teeth to still cross. I got some processes to go through. I ain't got it all together, but I thank God that he still looks beyond all of my faults, and I thank him that he sees all my needs. says the Lord is not interested in stuff we think makes us righteous. Even just coming to church as a thing to do. Some people feel that would make them righteous. But the only person that can make us righteous is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh, he says when we turn our hearts to him when we allow him to come into our life and we fear him, it is he who makes us one. So Jesus, not our nationality, our political affiliation or church denomination, it is Jesus who is our great equalizer. Peter realized this when he said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of a person. That it took a uh, the power of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, through a trance to get Peter to discover that all have been delivered, not of our own good works, but by the precious blood of the Lamb. 